Well, hello, everyone. Okay. My name is Captain Dan Blanchard, the owner and CEO of Uncruise Adventures. And here we are on another No Ordinary Adventure with Captain Dan. And tonight, this afternoon, this morning, wherever you're viewing this from at whatever time, I've got somebody really special to me, Mike Carroll. Mike is living on the, the lovely island of Lanai and has been for quite a while now. And I know Mike because I've been into his store many times. And also, as you look and, and meet him, you're going to see an image off to our left, his right, of the Safari Explorer, our boat that's been traveling over there since about 2010. So, Mike, welcome. Hey, Dan, thank you so much. You know, it's a real pleasure to, to see you again. Well, it's it's really a pleasure, I think, for all of us listening in right now, because you know, not only are we we celebrating your work and your art, but obviously, you know, tough hit recently on Maui that affects Lanai and travelers. And and we all know that, you know, of all the times to travel to Hawaii, we're asking you travel now. <laughs> because uh, yeah, a lot of people have taken the the situation uh in Lahaina and and basically canceled their plans throughout Hawaii. And it's just really adding extra pain onto what we consider our people, our community. This is absolutely true. You know, the Lahaina uh, it was devastated. Okay, I mean, this is this is truly a tragedy there. But the rest of the island and the rest of Hawaii is is open. You know, and, and it's when you come out here as a visitor. This is a very local economy. You spend money, you know, here or you know, someplace over on Maui. You're you're helping families who have been displaced, and it's it's truly critical. I think don't cancel your plans. Change them a little bit. You know, the way that you guys do it. You know, it's it is like the the perfect little cruise ship that you know you, you go to where people need to be. So yeah, this is a this is something that's going to be a little time in fixing, but you know it will you know we will recover. But in the meantime, come on out here. The the weather's fine, really. Well, and I think you know, Mike. In addition to you know, there's a lot of other places behind besides Lahaina, but but you know the the reality is those people that live and work in Lahaina are also looking for places to live and work and. When we see a downswing in visitors to other places in the island, that actually hurts them in addition because they don't have a place to go. I know we have a lot of businesses we work with on Maui and, you know, they, many of them ran rafts and this kind of thing out of Lahaina that were lost. And, and now they're moving to, to other little ports and, and we're just, just, I guess I want to reinforce right off the bat. If there's any time to visit Hawaii, it's right now, please. This is the absolute time to do it. Yeah, you, you are correct. You know, and, and we hope that people listen to your call. You know, it's, it's been tough, you know, and, and I was fortunate. I had, you know, none of my friends perished, but they've lost homes. They've lost all their art. They've lost the galleries that they showed, you know, showed in. We are truly fortunate here. We had none of that. We had some wind, we had nothing like what they experienced. And when I see the photos and the videos, it just, it shakes me to my core. It's like, it's so tough. And these are people who, like you said, they're not looking for a handout. They're looking to work. Okay. Right. And they're looking to, you know, it's tourism is huge out here. They're looking to be, you know, ambassadors to the island. So no, I think, you know, anything that you can do to reinforce the please come to Hawaii. It's going to be welcome. Well, my brother, you and I are going to do just that by sharing all the goodness, huh? Hey, sweet. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Mike, I, I have visited your store many times. I have some of your artwork uh, in Juno in my home there and even have yeah. a piece on board my sailboat uh, here in I Seattle. Yeah. But the, you know, the, the thing that was always remarkable to me is, is, not just what you had at the gallery because you represent yourself and other artists, but, but I loved your story. And I think at the end of the day, we all want to hear story. We want to know, particularly when we travel, what, you know, why, how did Mike end up here nearly, I think 40 years or 
23, 24 20, years yeah, ago. 20, yeah. 24 years ago. Yeah. And well, my wife and I met in Chicago. Now I'm from North Carolina and my wife is from Georgia. So rural, but we met in Chicago and mm-hmm. I heard her accent and I knew that she was from someplace in the South. We got married like four months after we met and it will be our 44th anniversary coming up here. The Were you like, Eight and ten when you got married? Oh, you're too kind. I'm going to be seventy in about three days, so no, you're too kind. No, you know what? We we got married in December, and if you're from Chicago, that's not a good time to have an anniversary trip right right there. So we would go to Arizona, we'd go to Mexico, we'd go to Hawaii, and you know, for our twentieth anniversary, we decided to come to Lanai. And the minute we set foot on this island, and, and I'm looking out at our our little park here. There's there's nobody in it. I mean, this is you can't make this up. We said this is like a little southern town, only Hawaii style. And I was I was trained as a medical illustrator. I did commercial and medical illustration in Chicago. And I went, Cat, if we had like one of these little plantation houses, we could come here for maybe three months a year, like mid-December to mid-February, and I could paint in oil. I could go back to what I I truly loved doing, but as a 20-some-year-old college grad, knew that I would be a waiter in Baltimore or driving a taxi out there. I want to go back to painting in oil. And so... Five days into our trip here, we bought the worst house on this island. We bought a house, a padlock on the door, all the windows busted out. The tin roof was missing in spots. And it took us a year to get it insurable. I was out here five times that year. When it turned into a cottage, we went, why do this for three months? Let's take two years off. Let's sell everything in Chicago. Let's take two years and see what happens. And I said, look, if my paintings find homes, we stay. If not, the rat race always needs rats. Okay. You can <laughs> always go back. And and things worked out real well. So yeah, we made the full-time move here. We sold the shack about 16 years ago. We're still in a 1920s house, but a little bit nicer one. Okay. This island for and you know because you've been out here, but this island is a it's a, a trip back into history. This is the way Hawaii used to be. This is, the, it's the old plantation style. And yeah, you just, when people come here, they're like, how does this exist here? And it's like, I have no idea. But, you know, there are times that I like have to pinch myself. Is this a dream? I, I'm really here still? I think, yeah. And I, I think, and you know, the, you know, the physical beauty of the island, because you guys, you know, will do, you know, snorkels and, and dives and things like that. But the just the peaceful nature of the island up here is something that you you have to experience. Yeah, I agree. I, I like you, came to Lanai for the first time earlier on in life. I was in my early 20s. And well, just a couple of years ago. Yeah. What do you know about that? It was 1983. And, you know, I was, I was fascinated. It was, you know, it it was not long after the Dole years, as I recall. And in fact, that may have been transitioning about then. I think it was right then. And, you know, Lanai city was still very much a working town. And, you know, the, the wonderful thing that's been retrained, retained is that that lovely quaintness of old Hawaii has not been lost. And even the, the beautiful lodges and, and hotels that have been established, just fit into the scenery so well and are not obnoxious and right, I, right down at Manili Bay. I mean, it's, it's, it's well, amazing. I know my wife, you know, Kat will, will talk about this and she's like, okay, we go to, you know, other islands as well. And she's like, you have a hotel next to a hotel, next to a hotel, next to a hotel on, on both sides here. You have a hotel on a bay. Okay, you have a hotel in a, a mountain type setting, which for people who are are not familiar with, you know, Hawaii, yeah, you know, there there are hills here, but this is 
they are two entirely different fields. It's a, a different geography. And yeah, you come to this island and you get the best of both worlds. We get a lot of folks coming over here from Honolulu mm. uh, for like long weekends to stay up here at the Sensei Resort because it's like going to Colorado. Okay. I mean, you're up in a mountain retreat. Um, it's cooler. Yeah, it is. And all the islands have seaside resorts. Nobody is on like a, a beautiful bay like Manelli Bay with nothing else around them. A park. It, 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 a park. Yeah, I know. You can't make it up. <laughs> I mean, truly, I realized this the minute we got here, it's because we'd been to Hawaii before. It's like, how does this exist? Yeah. And, you know, for us, this has been, well, we've lived here now longer than we did in Chicago, you know? So mm -hmm. this is truly home. I mean, this is, I, I've lived here longer than I've lived anywhere else. So yeah, this is my home. Well, you know, it's, it's a wonderful place to call home. I would love to call <laughs> Lanai City. That whole area, my home, I, I'm envious. I will say that, you know, that 1983 visit lay, ended up with my two children having Hawaiian middle names, Daniel Kai and Dene Leilani. And, and that's all based on just a stone's throw from where you're at. And uh, so it, it definitely impacted me as well. But I, I'm really curious how a guy, you know, that was trained in medical art per se, how, I mean, how did you make this transition into you know the beautiful work that you do where's that is there a dividing line or do they blend together these two forms of art no no that's really interesting you know the med school at hopkins has this program called art as applied to, to medicine it was founded in 1911 at, by a, a german artist named max brodel and it was very classical it's a very classical training and you know, I, I just sort of fell into that. I, I was pre-med when I went off to school, okay? And I was like, oh, my gosh, if I go into medicine, I'm never going to be able to draw. And, you know, I've got to somehow blend them. And it turned out that 30 miles from the school where I was going at the time was the, the med school at Hopkins had this program. And so I I went through that for for grad school. But that was in order to make a living. Okay, because I knew that coming out, like I said, you come out of out of college as a like a painting student. I was accepted at the Maryland Institute of Art. I was gonna I was gonna go there and do painting, and it's like, no, I will be a cab driver. I will be a waiter. I it's like you're not going to be able to you know, make things happen. So the training was fantastic, and then I met Kat. You know, we got married. She talked me into going freelance, and so. I was up and down Michigan Avenue in Chicago. Oh my gosh. Doing not only scientific illustration, but editorial cartoons for the Chicago Tribune. People in Chicago know this beer called Goose Island. I, I, I drew the goose for them. I, <laughs> I had a cartoon strip in the back of a, a, of a local paper. I, you know, I, I, you name it, I did it. I, I just wanted to create. Sure. But when we came here, I went, maybe this is a, a chance to reconnect with painting in oil, which is something that I, the oil paints had been in the closet in Chicago for 20 years. Kat and I would move from, you know, like one place from, you know, to another and she'd go, Mike, can we get rid of these, you know, oils? And I'm like, no, I'm going to paint one day. I promise you, I'm going to paint one day. And when we came here was when everything sort of clicked. And I think that you just, I don't know. I just sort of found the the place that would give me a chance to like reconnect with myself. And yeah, so that's, I mean, that's essentially how, how I went. There are times that I do paintings that are, you know, they're somewhat photo real. And there are times that I'll go more impressionist, you know, you, it's just, it's my mind jumps all over the place. My, and I, I just go with it. It's, I, I don't ask why. I just, it's like, this is what I'm going to do today. I, I like the way you put that. The mind just jumps around. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I love like, that. I, Did, I, I don't want to get, I don't want to get pigeonholed. And that was a thing that I felt like was happening in Chicago with my art. I was starting to get like pigeonholed and I, no, I didn't want that. I wanted to create. You know, I mean, I do commissions. I love doing commissions, but I only accept commissions 
for things that I want to paint. As a commercial artist, you didn't have that luxury. You know, it's like sure. I need this by tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, it was and a production more than a I, an art. I'm, yeah, I'm a pair of hands. Okay, that was what I was. So yeah, no, this is this has been like the craziest twenty some years. You just can't make it up. Well, and I now I want to get into that part. You just can't make it up because I'm I'm really curious. Having spent many times on your island and and tromped around it, I I'm curious. Is there an event or a place on the island that just strikes you as like if I were to walk in your store and you and I hit it off and you just had to share with me this one time was like the most memorable time that I've had on the island. What would that look like? You know, there is a painting that I did and it's it's when the full moon was rising over Haleakala and we have a rock that you've seen that it's called Pu'upehe. The locals call it Sweetheart Rock. And the moon is rising as the sun is setting like behind me. So you get this orange glow, and but the moon is there. There was just something about that when, when I was painting it. It's like, this is one of the most beautiful things I think I've ever seen. It's like, I never took the time to, to get out and, and watch, you know, or, or look at, at things like this in Chicago. You know, you, you just don't take the time to do that. And as, as I'm watching the moon rise over here and the sun is setting, it's like only here, right? It, yeah. it, now this is, but that is, that is, I think, like the, the singular thing that sticks in my mind as like, what a, what a great place that I've found to, you know, set up my easel. It's, oh my gosh. Yeah. I, and the sweetheart rock, what a, a picturesque spot. We go right by it in the boat and, and even, you know, see it when we take the skiffs and the kayaks out and that kind of thing. And of course, lots of red dirt there too. <laughs> I know, I know. This is so funny. I, I I grew up in in a little town outside of Charlotte in in North Carolina, and you know, when I, when my legs were long enough to hit the gas pedal, I got out of there, and and went up to up to Maryland, and it's known for the red dirt. And it's like, so where the heck did I move? I moved to a place that is red dirt. You know, I still I can't get away from it, but I absolutely I love it here. You know, and, and plus. You know, just the the geology with the you know with volcanoes and and you know all the different the sheer cliffs that you'll see here as you come in, which I think are from earthquakes and like prehistoric times. I mean, I can't imagine what else sheared the cliffs like that. You know, you've got to you really have to you know go. This is like unpla like no place else. It really is. I uh, just share a quick experience I had. We were in what the chart calls White Manili Bay. And the chart has white and black Manili Bay. We were in white, the harbor. And we, I had actually, before I started on cruise, I had taken three years off in my 40-foot sailboat to take my my family sailing across the Pacific. And we spent wow. about two months on Lanai. Wow. And yeah, it was, it was awesome back when we had to do a a stern tie or a bow tie either way to the, to the Harbor there. And, but the red dirt, I was not familiar with it. And one morning we woke up and it had been windy all night and the deck was just covered with red dust. And then, it, then it <laughs> rained, That's true. That's true. <laughs> but my white boat was red for probably two days. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I know my, my wife founded the cat sanctuary that we have on this Island. And I'm sure that you're, your your guests know about that um, absolutely but you know people will go out there and I'll, I'll see them you know then they'll come back into town and i'll see the little red paw prints on there and i go you've got the lanai souvenir right because <laughs> that red word is not coming out okay <laughs> So that don't is the white. truth. Don't wear white. <laughs> well, yeah, and for those that don't know, I mean, there's a whole red dye, red shirt industry. It seems like, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's you a reason. Get, yeah, I mean, if you haven't been to Hawaii yet, but particularly, I would say Lanai, you can go and they they have these shirts that you can buy that are dyed with the local dirt, and it is 
I mean, it's real. They're really quite beautiful. I cherish them. They are. They are. Yeah. 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 It's not uh, too it's, far from the color you got right there. Yeah. Well, it, it close, close. It is. Yeah. It is. This this one this one would be an REI, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I need to renew my my lanai red dirt shirts for sure <laughs> but you know as you look uh, at, at how your your art developed and that kind of thing i mean were there certain elements of hawaii and her people that that you felt motivated to to capture you know a lot of people will come in here and they'll see portraits that i've done and there is something about trying to capture a, a person's personality, their story in art. And it's, it's something that if, if you look at this painting, you're going to feel what is, you know, what drew me to paint this, this image. There are, and I've always loved, I've always loved portraiture. Mm -hmm. But there's something about painting the people out here. I feel like I'm also painting history, yeah, along with the along with the person. So it, it's I don't know. It, it's so bizarre. I, it, it, somebody was in here ye yesterday, and they they said, you know, what makes you paint what you paint? And I went, I have no idea. I don't know. I just know that it, it it's something that strikes me. And I know that I have to paint it. I don't know why yet, but I know I need to paint it. And I'll figure it out while, while I'm doing it. You know, you'll folks will come in. They'll see, well, I, I painted my wife, of course, you know, at the cat library. <laughs> of um, course. But there are paintings that, you know, I've done, there are like three or four of them in here that were in the state portrait shows that we have here. And, awesome. you know, they are, you know, like a, a gal who was 100 years old, you know, who's whose dad built the church that's up at what is now the Sensei Resort, the little green church that's up there. You know, her dad built that church in 1935, no I think. No kidding. Uh, wow. Yeah. And it's just, you know, there are just certain things that I'll see people, and it's like they have a story, they have a story in their face. Mm -hmm. and, I, I, and I can tell that, you know, they're, I am going to be intrigued by this painting. But I do, and I mean that's sort of that's sort of how I I figure out what to paint. I guess that that's awesome. I I do also, uh, you know, personally find that that your art and the art of that you do of of individuals and people in their settings in Hawaii, I do believe it does have a historical value. You know, I think we're we're blessed that so many of the indigenous people have kind of found their ways back to their roots and their in their celebrations and even some in their daily lives and what they wear and and I find that quite a joy. Which which does bring up another subject a little bit off script here, but having spent a lot of time in the islands myself, I know that sometimes that you know there's the visitor and then there's the howley that comes to live. How 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 did that work for you and how has that developed over the years? Here, this is sort of a totally different island. I think we. Mm -hmm. What I've found, and and maybe this is true in, in any place, it's like if you are a giver and not a taker, you're accepted. Okay, and in anything that you do, and it's like right now, you know, Cat, my wife is she's over on Maui. She flew over today with with our friend Anne, and she's helping do food prep for World Central Kitchen. Okay. Her heart. And then tomorrow she's going to be at the Maui Humane Society petting burned cats and dogs and trying to reunite animals with their, with their owners. You know, if you're, if you give, you're accepted and, and people figure out real fast who are like, who's over here to make a buck or, you know, like fleece somebody and who's here to, to help. You know, it contribute, and I, I think that's important in in anywhere you live. I, I could not agree more, and I think that is travel in general. Correct. Yeah, right. in that in that when we're when we are good visitors and we are giving visitors and we care to learn, that is a vast difference between you know something like what Uncruise does or what you do compared to maybe an industrialized tourism type situation. It's, uh, and I, I can just tell people who have not been with Uncruise that I get that 
when people come in. They they have they have a good feel for what you know each of the islands. Each island has its own own vibe. It, it, it's like oh, yeah. and it, it's so yes. good. And and people have a really good feel when they come in here. And and it's because I think of your staff. I think they you know they are like we say they're Akamai. They're 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 smart. They they give people a good background and. With that background, you you appreciate more than than you would just as you know some schmuck walking off of a boat, you know, and walking around town. It, What's this it, red dirt? Where did that come right. from? I don't <laughs> like this red. <laughs> I can't get rid of that, you know, okay. enough of the red dirt. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, but no, it's no. It, we can tell. Okay, um, yeah. And so, yeah, when the when the uncruised folks come in, it's a it's a real pleasure. Well, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. And I have many friends on there. Next time you see Neil, tell say hello to Neil for me. It's I been shall. A, yeah, I shall. yeah. He's a, a great resource and help for us. Uh, um, absolutely, he is great the partner. He is sort of the you know the connector. He's our he's our he's a person who gets people from A to B. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's a. I've certainly walked up that hill and rode bikes up that hill many times. Oh but, but let me tell you, uh, I'd rather ride with Neil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was gonna say I don't want to ride up that hill. Maybe going it's, down. It's, it. it's yeah. a tough ride. I would um, imagine. <laughs> so you know, when you're thinking about your gallery, you're you just said you turned seventy. I mean, yeah, what's the... me two days, okay? Uh, three days. I got three days. Oh, you got three days? Okay, yeah. 69 is sweet right, right now. Right there, right. <laughs> <laughs> what, when that far off distant age of 70 knocks at your door, <laughs> right? What, what, what's the, as, as you're turning into a senior, of, you know, elderly man, golden years, what our parents used to talk about, right. what, what's that mean for you and your gallery going forward? What's, what's the look going to be? You know what? It's, that's really interesting because I don't know. I, I sort of feel like, like mentally, I stopped at age twenty six. <laughs> okay, it's like I, I, I love what I do. I love life. I love you know. I, I love painting. I mean, I, I'm going to still paint. You know, sooner or later. I mean, we're going to do a little bit more travel than we have in the past, and you know. It's it's like it's like you you know you're in the travel business and I love I love seeing different places so we're going to be in Iceland and at the end of October we'll be in Umbria and in June and probably pop up to Venice because there is just something about that city that visually is it's one of the most exciting places that I've seen so you know we're gonna we'll do a little bit more of that. But I'll sell the paintings here. I mean, I'll do paintings of these of these areas, and I'll come right back here. I mean, this is this is home, okay. Yeah. And and truly, and when when your guests come here, they're going to have to ask themselves: it's, it's like, am I really in America now? It's like, yeah, you are. This is so totally different than anything that you've seen before for me yeah i'll go do my travel and that sort of thing but when i take the little puddle jumper from honolulu and come back and the and the wind sort of blowing through my hair and there's like no sirens there's no noise no horns hawking it's like yeah i'm home i'm back again so yeah we'll we'll stay right here yeah i i hear you i often when i explain and i would say that you, you know, what you're saying about the islands being so different in their personality is very true. Two that that I reflect upon is kind of having the old Hawaii feel or Lanai and Molokai. And, Absolutely. you know, very much feel like you're you're visiting oftentimes a pre-World War II environment. It just feels that way, and which is so refreshing. Thus, am I in the United States? That question comes up. Right. Although being an Alaskan, I hear I hear all the time uh, people come up and they're, they're always amazed that Alaska is part of the United States. And I we get that every know, every year. It's like, how long will you get back to the states? Well, I think <laughs> every day, I guess. <laughs> yeah. it's where I live, you know. I know it's they are both just so far removed, and so 
tell me that I'm right about this. The safari, we're, you're here in the winter, and then in the summer, you're up in Alaska. Is that correct? Are you guys doing that still? Yeah, so uh, 49th and 50th states. And uh, so Alaska and Hawaii are the two destinations for the safari explorer. Yeah. And, and she starts out in Alaska. She's going to actually start out in the Aleutian Islands in not too long. Wow. 20 months. And uh, yeah, she, so she's going to go on a new route up there, but she'll continue on her Hawaii route to basically arriving, you know, usually just before Thanksgiving and then departing in, you know, late April, early May sometime. And we did run one season uh, all year round in Hawaii and decided that not to do that in the future, just because the it wasn't so much about the environment as much as just our markets primarily from the continental United States. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's more of a time for, I, we get a lot of Aussies and Kiwis and right. such the visit in the summer, but so we, we, we couldn't, we, we did better in Alaska, but, but certainly it was our intent to, to keep the boat over there because it, it, the boat really does well there. Well, it's, don't be surprised if you see Kat and, and, and me, someplace up in Alaska on one of these trips, because we have talked about that. We've never visited. And the, the, the beauty of, I, I don't want to be a sales guy for you, but the beauty. Of, <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with this, Mike, go right ahead. But, but, but the beauty of it is that it's small enough that you can get into places that other, other ships can't. And I mean, I, folks who have come in here on the Hawaii trip, have told me that they've done the the Alaska trip as well and and multiple times and it's like wow you know you guys are you're you're doing it right uh, it's 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 a lot of fun i mean people really look for you know not there there's the names and the names you know the names the big names about every place haleakala and you know on and on but i like to say that it's it's the magic is really in the places you don't know and so I'm curious, from your standpoint, we probably have a lot of people that are listening to this cast right now that are, are going to come and they're going to come to Lanai. What, what are some things they should miss in, in Mike's eyes? Wow. Well, yeah, our bay, you know, Hulapoi Bay is like a perfect crescent of sand that, you know, with spinner dolphins that will sometimes yeah. call a SeaWorld show for you. The town here okay, is this is truly a throwback to the way Hawaii used to be, okay? And you are in, you're in 1930s Hawaii yeah. when you come here. The cat sanctuary, if you are not, even if you are allergic, you don't have to go inside. It's an outdoor thing. It's, it's, it's uncaged. It's doing so many good things for not only the cats, but for, we have ground nesting birds here. We have uh, several populations the chick survival rate since they've started the sanctuary has gone from 20 to 80%. So we have now one of the largest ground nesting bird uh, populations in all of Hawaii. You know, uh, yeah, just enjoy yourselves, uh, you know, uh, and enjoy the scenery, you know, and, and enjoy the way life was, you know, 50 plus years ago. I mean, because that's what you're going to find here. Yeah, I, I I think it's easy to get caught up sometimes in particular little things, you know, the bucket list type thing. Right. But at times, I really believe that one of the best things that people can do when they visit Lanai City, for instance, is just to slowly walk and, and and breathe this place in, Absolutely. and walk around and and walk up to the resort and you know do do some of the things that are just slow and purposeful. And I, I mean, there are a lot of great places to see on Lanai, don't get me wrong, but sometimes I feel like going back, you know, almost a hundred years in time to what Lanai city is today is it's just really refreshing, but you have to, you have to take the time to, to kind of let it come in and inhale it. All right. It's like, yeah, don't be, don't be the mainland tourist. Okay. You know, who's like, you know, where's, you know, everything here is mom and pop. Okay, mm -hmm. it's all mom and pop stores all the way around. There are no national chains. Okay, this is, I mean, truly, it, it there's is no a, Burger King. Nope, sorry, no nope, McDonald's, Lou Ginger. If we got, <laughs> hey, we got our own little thing here, we got Dana <laughs> TC's, we got Pele, you know, like we, we've got some restaurants here, 
but no, it, it's just take it easy, relax. You know what? What I found in my travels, you know, when we go someplace, is anytime you have to make that one extra step to get off of like the main drag, you know, just one extra step, just, you know, go to one more, a bus or a train or something that, or a ship that gets you to someplace that no one else goes to. That's the most rewarding. And because you have, you have it to yourself. You know, I, I love going places that, when I'm there, I don't hear one word of English, okay? Yeah. And I, I I love the fact that, okay, I'm someplace that nobody else, you know, from around me is, this is a good thing. I I, I, I think I've found something special here. But, you know, for with this island, we're hard to get to. And, and the fact that you guys find us is just amazing. <laughs> uh, but I think that I think that your guests will absolutely love it here. Yeah, it's a, it's a real thing. It's it's uh like we say the real Hawaii and I I think back to the to the adage I always said the magic is in the names you don't know. And uh, yeah, it. you know, I mean certainly I've had great times on Haleakala and would go right back, but you know the the magic of of just you know snorkeling off a shark fin or or just falling asleep up at Sweetheart Rock or or strolling through town or I mean, there's so many places that to me are magical on Lanai and, and one of them is your, your store and, you um, are... well, it's, it's, it's true. I mean, you present a, a form of Hawaiian art or art that focuses on Hawaii might be a better way to put it that I, I think is, is a treasure for anybody's home. But, but that kind of brings me around to the, maybe my last uh, question or point is, is. You know, now we've been talking about you. You've, you've shared some of your art. I mean, how can people reach you, uh, whether they're coming to the island or, or they're trying to find you online? You know what? You can find us online, guaranteed. Uh, if you just look for Mike Artist Lanai, well, uh, you're, you're going to find me. But MikeCarrollGallery.com, that that will do it. You can email me. I'm on Lanai, Lanai Mike at Mac.com. Old school Mac, but yeah, you can find me there as well. But yeah, it's we should be fairly easy to uh, easy to find, and this will give you a sort of a, a taste of what's in the gallery. And but there are always going to be new things that you know for folks who, who pop in. So yeah, we, well, we look forward to welcoming your guests. And I look forward to getting up there. We're gonna have to have Neil get the the mic shuttle warmed up. <laughs> And let him know we're we're coming. But I, I before I came on, I took the chance to go to your site and refamiliarize myself. And of course, I ran across the classic self portrait. Um, <laughs> you want to tell us anything about that? We'll make uh, our closing comment. No, the 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 portrait of me yawning. Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> oh my god, I was. I've been very fortunate to have been juried into all of the portrait competitions that we have out here every three years, we have a, a state portrait show. And like I said, I love doing portraiture, but for this one year I was tired. And I, I, I told my wife, I, I'm going to like, I'm going to blow it off. I'm not going to do it this year. And an artist called me up from Maui. And the first words out of his mouth were, how's your portrait coming? Are you doing your portrait? Now, but now I'm blowing it off. And he goes, You've been in all the portrait. Everybody is expecting you to at least apply, you know? And I went, you know, you're right. I'm going to do a self-portrait. But it's like, so what do you do? Do you do like the the heroic pose? Do you do like the thoughtful pose? And I yawned. And I said, I don't know that I've seen a painting of anyone yawning. Uh, and I decided to do it. I, if you give me one sec. The portrait's right here. Okay, you're on. Hold on. Okay, hold on. One sec. Mike is going for the famous yawning self-portrait. <laughs> you're killing me, brother. This is awesome. I don't know if this is going to show. Oh, my <laughs> anyway. It's showing perfect, Mike. Okay. So, the, so that, da -da. Uh, that's me. Um, <laughs> 
and I had this I had this hanging up here, and a gentleman who owns ninety eight percent of this island walked in one day, and he's like, "Mike, would you move that? It makes me yawn every time I see it." <laughs> and so I, I have it like tucked away over here, but it just no. It, it, I, I want people to know that this is not a like what we call high maka maka, you know, like yeah. <laughs> well, those galleries, you know, this, this gallery yeah. is like as laid back a gallery as you're going to find. And anybody who <laughs> lets a portrait of himself like that be seen is, I want them to know, you know, you're going to have fun when you come in. Oh, I, well, I can guarantee you I will next time there. And anybody who comes <laughs> by is going to have a ball. I'll have to uh, text you a couple pictures we have in the office that I, I picked up years ago from you. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of the, the split piece like you have behind you there. Uh, oh, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Right. That- yeah, I've had it in my Seattle office ever since. Gosh, I think we got those in 2008 or nine when we were, we were doing all our research trips uh, over to the islands. Well, Mike, thank you so much for coming on. I look forward to seeing you this winter. I wasn't able to make it uh, last year, kind of with uh, all the recovering from the pandemic and such, but I'm going to be there this year and I will let you know when I'm coming and I, and I will walk up the hill. I'll (laughs) let Neil take me down. I need to, I have to relive that. I'll pick you up. (laughs) I'll pick you up, but Dan, thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for coming on board with No Ordinary Adventure. We've been privileged to have Mike Carroll from Lanai on board. And this is a a great look into Hawaii, the intricacy of of an area of Hawaii that is like the 1930s. And as Mike and I were sharing earlier in the cast, this of all times that you could choose to go to Hawaii, the first time, the second time, or the 20th time, this is the time. Uh, we all know that what's happened on on Maui with Lahaina has been extremely tragic. There are a lot of people looking for work. Unfortunately, as the travel industry sometimes works, when there's bad news, people just stop going to the whole area. I was, Mike, years ago, I was talking to people. People weren't coming to the United States because there were riots in Baltimore. Right. And, you know, uh, what? You know, uh, Alaska's, you know, 2,000 miles away from that. And so for those of us who are, are, are travelers who are believers in what travel can bring to a community, I ask you whether it's traveling with Uncruise on the Safari Explorer, or other means, staying at the lodge, please choose to travel to Hawaii this winter, next summer. This is a long haul for the people of Hawaii and particularly those from Maui Nui who are all affected by this Maui Absolutely. County. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And until they get the ferry situation figured out, I mean, our guests from Maui have like dropped to like nothing. Okay. And it's, you know, it, we feel it, you know, in the meantime, I continue to paint. And so, you know, when folks come in here, there'll be some fresh paint on the, on the easel guaranteed. There we go. Well, Mike, thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you this winter. You got it. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Aloha. Aloha.